Okay, let's talk about presets. Currently, I have two devices connected, uh, SPN 1624 and an SPN conference. Notice the tab down here. This shows me the list of my Aspen devices. I can choose the device settings for the Aspen device that I have selected. Let's click on device settings and let's go to preset management. Now in preset management it shows me uh, three different items. Recall settings from a preset. Preset number is one and we can see that we're currently in preset number one. We can store settings to a preset and we can reset a particular preset to the factory defaults. So for instance if I wanted to go to preset number two I would simply select the number two or type in a number and hit return and then click on the recall button. Also if there was a preset description I would have that title right in here and we'll get to how to do that in a minute. Let's click on recall. It'll ask me um, or tell me that I'm about to recall a preset and I'm going to confirm that by clicking OK. Now the preset is currently loading and next the labels will load for um, all of the items within that particular preset. And now we are currently in preset number two. Now let's say that I wanted to give this a preset description. Well what I could do at this point is we have a menu up here that has preset miscellaneous settings. If I select that I can provide a preset description here. So let's do that. I will type in um, my preset number two. And it tells me here important. It says changes made to this setting become permanent only if the preset is stored to non-volatile memory. Now one of the things that's important to know is even though I'm working in preset number two, that preset that I recalled is stored in memory. Now when I make adjustments, I'm making adjustments to the active preset, which is number two. I'm not changing anything within the preset until I actually store it. So now that I have created a preset uh, description, I can also choose if I'd like to run a macro when that preset is recalled. Let's say that my macro is going to run, um, maybe it's going to change some variable values that I'm going to be calling that are important to this particular preset. And it gives you information here about that as well. So I can select a preset startup macro. And I select the macro number and it'll run on the recall. So at this point, let's store this preset. And let's store settings to a preset. I'm going to select preset number two and I'll select store. About to store active settings to preset number two, click OK and it's saving the settings there. Okay. And now notice that we have my preset number two. The description has come here. I can't edit it because I can only edit the preset description here. Okay, so now these are the things that you can set up here in preset uh, miscellaneous settings. Well, let's go back now to preset management. If we wanted to change this preset back to its default. I can select preset number two and I can say let's reset to its default settings. I click OK and it's going to take me back to exactly the way it comes from the factory. And notice even the preset description is cleared and also the macro number none or actually we don't have a macro selected to uh, for run on recall but it would be cleared and set to none as well. Now the other thing that we can do here is we can go to power up and under power up we can set a preset to be called when the box is first powered up. By default from the factory it comes set to preset number one and we could easily set that to any preset that we like. Um, also you can set up a power up macro to run as well. Now as an example if we go back to preset management, oftentimes what I like to do is I will set up a preset for a customer. And if someone happens to come in and play with that preset and then save it, um, it would be hard to reset it back unless you had saved that to a file. So I like to do two things. First of all, I like to save those settings to a file. 
And if you go to the file menu, you can select save settings as. And here we can select a title. And then we can save that off to a file. Now these presets are XML files. And another nice little feature is you can drop the preset into a web browser, such as Firefox or Internet Explorer, and see all of the preset descriptions simultaneously in um, a numeric order. So I can click Save. And it's going to save that off as a file. And I can bring in that file uh, at a later date. So let's say I'm off-site creating uh, all of my presets and then I want to go into the real system on site and I can load my presets and then load them to the device and uh, now that it's done you can see I have this simple XML file here and I can load that file by going to file load settings and here it is my preset number two okay now the other thing I like to do is perhaps you want to make a backup of this preset. So let's store it. There's 24 presets available. So let's say I want to store this to preset number 22. I'll enter that. And now let's store it to preset number 22. I click Store. And what I'm doing is creating a backup uh, of my current preset to an unused preset. So if ever someone comes in and does something to preset number two that um, is not favorable. I can always recall preset number 22 and save it back to preset number two. And um, we will have a, a backup of our preset immediately. So that's how presets work.